Hello everybody, I'm Olivia and welcome to Pace and Jannies. Hello everybody, so today we are going to be talking all things book recommendations because I'm doing the book recommendations tag which I'm excited to do. I, no one tagged me in it but I was talking to a couple friends like you should do that like I'd be really interested in your answers so here we are doing it. It's a currently very rainy and thunderstormy day. Coffee, just something like comfy and cozy. And I thought we would talk through some of my book recommendations based on these prompts. Um, this was really hard to come up with books for these prompts. I was like struggling with some of them because I've got like a unique position on them. Um, so I'll talk you through them as we go, but go grab a coffee. This is going to be a long little chatty video all about some books that I absolutely love. Okay, so the first question is books I tell people are my favourites. Um, for me, this is really hard because I don't just have like one favourite book. Like if you ask me a favourite contemporary romance book, I could name about 20. But if you ask me my favourite dark romance book, like it varies per genre and who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to my boyfriend's family, I'm not going to tell them I love some like really smutty book. Or if I'm talking to like one of my close friends, I'm not going to give them like one of these almost like older or more acceptable fiction books. I don't typically feel guilty about what I read and what I enjoy reading and I don't think anyone should but I just cater to my audience a bit more because a lot of the times if I'm talking to like family and friends and stuff or like older family and friends they're like oh what are you reading like maybe I'll go check it out and I don't really want to recommend like a dark mafia romance to my like boyfriend 60 year old mum so <laughs> For those people that are slightly older or just a bit more mature or don't typically read what I read, I recommend The Invisible Life of Annie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is one that I will say is my like favourite book to them, which it is. It is one of my favourite books, but this one is an incredible story told throughout time following Annie LaRue, who is originally born into like 1600s France and her dad like agrees to sell her off so she makes a deal with the devil or marry her off. And so... Addie basically's dad decides that he's gonna marry her off and she doesn't want to get married she wants to live and explore and see the world and so she makes a deal with the devil and he basically makes her so like gives her eternal life but no one will remember who she is and he will come back and collect on certain things and it's an incredible tale throughout so much time you go from like the 1600s to modern day you travel all over the world and you're following someone that just wants to be remembered by someone and just wants to leave her mark on the world and it's an incredible story. B. Schwab's writing is phenomenal in this. It's not something you can read very quickly, it's something you have to slow down and take your time with. I believe it's one of the first books I annotated, yeah. See, I used a Tombow highlighter in this, or Tombow brush pen in this one, but one of the lines is just there's a rhythm moving through the world. You discover what you can and cannot live without, the simple necessities and the simple joys, that, and the small joys that define a life. That makes life bearable and it's just... It's so stunning. I love this book. I need to do a reread of it at some point, but it's just incredible. So if you want a book that's going to make you think, this is one that I will say is my favourite. Then if I'm talking to my contemporary romance fans who don't really like a whole ton of spice, but then like, like aren't closed door only, um, I would recommend Things We Never Got Over by Lucy School. I typically say this is my favourite contemporary romance. I loved it. I've tabbed it up. I read it this year. It's absolutely phenomenal. You're following Knox and Naomi in this one. Naomi has a twin sister called Tina, who has kind of been always very, very destructive, while Naomi's always felt like she has to make up for Tina's shortcomings. They're both uh, identical twins. So Tina ends up calling Naomi, saying that she needs money. Naomi shows up and arrives in knock em out this little small town. Turns out there's a niece that she never knew about who's now 11, year old, 11 years old and Tina steals everything that Naomi brought with her to knock em out. And everyone in knock em out thinks she's Tina and so she gets a lot of hate for that. But this is incredible. Knox is just like so, 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 so grumpy. Um, but it's such an incredible romance. It's chunky, but it's so worth every single page and every single word about these two. It's heartwarming. It's hopeful. Um, there are some incredibly sad moments in this one as well. So there's such a range to the emotions in this that I just truly appreciate it. And it's perfect for springtime right now. So go get your hands on this if you haven't read it yet and you're a fan of contemporary romances. There's some life stuff in this as well. It's not all just straightforward romance typical plot. This has a lot of just regular contemporary scenes in it. So definitely recommend. And then for my dark romance lovers, my favourite or the book I tell everyone is my favourite, which is true, is The Emperor by Runix. So Runix has an incredible writing style that is just I'm in awe of and I love deeply. This is told from third point of view. It's also the third book in a series. The first book is The Predator. 
Um, that was actually Runix's first ever book and you wouldn't know from how it's written. But this is following Dante and Amara who are like in the mafia world of Tenebrae. Uh, Dante is next in line to like lead his dad to the current leader of the, of the mafia. And then Amara grew up on the estate. She, her mum was like one of the housekeepers. And so she's always grown up there and her and Dante have always had like a side eye secret relation, not secret relationship, but they've had a secret attraction to each other and sent of a lot, have spent a lot of time together. And it's following them from like when they were kids up until now. And it's just an incredible story. There's so much strength in this. There's so much rebellion. There is a lot of just incredibleness. I love this book so much. And I find it hard to talk about books I love completely sometimes because I don't want to spoil anything for the series one. But two, it's just such a, an amazing book that you need to go into blind, like the whole series blind. Um, there are obviously trigger warnings for this that are listed in here, but I do adore this book wholeheartedly. The next one is a guilty pleasure book. And I found this so hard because I don't really have any guilty pleasures when it comes to reading. I don't feel guilty for loving some very dark and disturbing romances. While also I don't feel guilty for loving romances in general because sometimes it can be seen as just like a knockoff genre, like a, oh, you don't really read, do you? Which isn't the case at all and it makes me frustrated but that is also another one where I don't have a guilty pleasure read I just really enjoy reading the books that I love so for that one I'm going to skip it because I don't think anyone should feel guilty for what they you know what they read and what they enjoy reading is an escape and it's a hobby and you do you no one no one gets to tell you that it's the wrong thing to do or you should feel guilty for doing it and for a book that everyone loved but you didn't, I'm gonna say The Spanish Love Deception. I was not a fan of this one at all. I gave it one star, I was really disappointed in it. Uh, this is following Lena and, what's his name? Aaron. So this one's following Lena and Aaron and Lena and Aaron have worked together for a good couple of years and now they work on the same team and there's a whole like dynamic between them. Lena just doesn't like Aaron at all and thinks that he's got some chip on his shoulder about her. And Aaron is just this really considerate person and he's trying to do a lot for the company and for Lena. He's constantly standing up for her. But it turns out Lena needs to go to her sister's wedding back in Spain and she's told her family she has a date, but she doesn't. Um, she thinks that her family in Spain thinks she's got some American boyfriend. And Aaron basically steps up and says, oh, I'll be your fake date to Spain. You know, I'll travel and pay for my flights and everything and go to this wedding with you because Lena's ex is going to be at the wedding and apparently he's just gotten engaged again. So there's that um it's sort of like a whirlwind adventure i loved aaron and aaron blackford deserved the one star for holding that book together but the rest of it i just could not stand unfortunately it wasn't for me but if you read it and loved it i'm glad you really enjoyed it i would just personally say maybe avoid it if you have an issue with meddlesome families or unneeded miscommunication and unneeded grudges that will be my two cents on that book for Red Fastest, I'm just a fast reader, so none of these books have really taken me by surprise. I'm like, oh my goodness, I read that so fast. Um, if I'm enjoying a story, I keep going. I don't really have like a lot of hard blocks, I guess, for when I stop reading. It's not like my brain's like, oh, I don't want to read anymore. Like sometimes if I get that, I know that the book isn't going to be a five star for me because typically my five star reads, I stay up like at night reading or like I can't put them down and things. Unfortunately, I can't really give you a recommendation on that one. I would say like any of my all time favorite books, I think you should definitely give a go and there'll probably be fast reads for you. But a lot of them is just my reading speed is fast. Okay, I'm guessing you can predict my answer for the next one. If you have any predictions, let me know in the comments. But the next one is a book that deserves more hype. And if you guys guess, don't guess it, I'm gonna be shocked because the book obviously deserves more hype is Entangled by R. Phillips. You all know I'm addicted to this series, uh, which is the a Twisted Tale series by R. Phillips. This is the first book, Entangled. It is one of the best books I have ever read. I adore this series. Um, it's very true to the character. It's a beautifully heartbreaking story and you follow these characters through so much in the three books there are. There's more hype because R. Phillips writing is just some of the best writing I've ever re read. Um, if you like Runix, if you like Magnolia Parks, 
if you like Lauren Ash's books you're going to love this series. So you have Elle who is going back to find this, find out what happened to her parents who died when she was 10. She's determined to solve who, what were they like as people, like all this stuff she doesn't really remember or know what happened to them. Uh, but she's just gotten back from a whirlwind global adventure a year ago where she met someone that she truly fell in love with in Costa Rica and she's healing from that broken relationship but while she's at her hometown in Alabama she meets this Jace Dawson who used to be her next door neighbour when she was a kid uh, but she doesn't really remember him he remembers a lot about her their parents were close so his parents can kind of tell her a little bit more about what they were like and help her unravel the mystery of what happened to them really and it's a phenomenal story you get to see both timelines you fall in love with both of the romances in this it's just perfect and if you thought this was good just wait they get even better fractured the last book is my all-time favorite this is just oh, this series is beyond phenomenal and I cannot wait for Revel this spring. Oh, next up is a book that's becoming a show or a film and I swear to god if the producers, directors, whoever it is, ruin this book because they've made it into a film and it's nothing like it, Love and Gelato, I'm looking at you, I'm gonna be so upset because the book that's becoming a show or a film, I think it's a film, is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, ignored my sun bleach cover, I know it's terrible but I cannot, cannot, cannot wait for this. So this is following Poppy and Alex who are a friends to lovers couple. Um, they go traveling every summer together. They met at university. They are from the same small hometown. But uh, Alex is like a very reserved, quiet character. And then you have Poppy who's this chaotic, loud girl who is doing some sort of travel agency work. And she has to go on this trip again. And so her and Alex two summers ago had this huge falling out and they haven't spoken since. But Poppy really needs someone to go on this trip with her and he agrees to go. So it's sort of you follow their previous summers together and then you follow the current timeline and what's happened and you unravel why these two haven't spoken to each other in ages. This was one of the first books where I was so excited to read again. This was in summer of 2021 so it's been a while. I am due for a reread on it but I'm scared to because I don't want to like not love it as much as I loved it the first time. <sighs> it's going to be incredible. But like I said, I am really scared that the producers are going to mess this one up because they've also got Beach Read and they have P Book Lovers coming out. Uh, so Emily Henry's books are all becoming films and I'm going to cry if this isn't very good because oh, I'm obsessed with this book. Absolutely obsessed. Okay, another weird one for me is a book I've reread the most and I've only reread certain books once. Um, a lot of my rereads are like Project Forever Collection where I'm trying to curate this whole set of books I've reread or annotated and tabbed and I just utterly adore and love and they are going to be like my Pride and Joy collection, the books that I'm always going to have that I'm never getting rid of and for me those have all been rereads once and there are some that I haven't done yet because I'm too scared but you know, there are some that I just, I haven't reread books multiple, multiple times. I've read Lisa on Love once and then reread it. Oh, I did a reread of the Chloe Brown series. I have reread, um, I've reread Twisted Love and annotated that one. I haven't reread the entire series, but I've reread that one. Boyfriend Material, I reread and unhauled. I've only done rereads once of books that I know I enjoyed. So obviously I need to see more of those and who knows, maybe there will be one where I just continually and continually reread it. But currently where I'm at in my reading journey, haven't done that yet. Okay, the next one's another hard one, which is books that I will always recommend. And the first one is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This is a childhood friends to lovers story following Percy and Sam who come from very different lives. Sam is from Barry's Bay. He helps his mum with their restaurant and then his dad died when he was younger. But then you have Percy who is the city girl and she starts going to the lake at like eighth grade. Um, and she has been going there for quite a while and every summer her and Sam and his older brother all hang out together and Percy kind of gets to explore this other side of her personality while Sam starts falling for Percy and it's this incredibly beautiful relationship between the two of them but then they haven't spoken in absolute years. I think it's been like 12 years. Yeah, I believe it's six, like 12 years. So it's six years of summers and then I think it's been 12 years since these two have seen each other. Um, but it's their story and like how they come together and you know go through some really difficult things and it's just beautiful and incredible and I loved following their previous timeline along with what's happening now while they're reconnecting and it's just beautiful and stunning and another one that I tabbed as soon as I was reading it because I absolutely loved it and then we also have Lease on Love by Fallon Blood. I will always recommend this one I just think it's such a fun romance it's short it's very quick to read it's very hopeful and heartwarming heartwarming uh you have Sadie who has just been like 
kicked out of her she's just been fired for standing up for herself from a very misogynistic boss and she finally caves and like starts following her instincts and begins to figure out what she wants to do next with her life and i love seeing that sort of like rekindling of her passions and figuring out what she's really interested in and she meets jack who very kind like there's a whole background to how she meets jack but this one you follow her just sort of re-establishing herself as a person while her friend group is hilarious and supportive jack is just finally finding a group of people to help them drag out something very very difficult and oh, i loved it i would definitely recommend this to anyone um it's incredible and brilliant and i loved it okay then we have favorite character and this is so hard because um there are a lot of characters that i utterly lo love and there are some that i just see so much myself in but for this one i'm going with daisy hates from or baby hates from the magnolia park universe series daisy hates reminds me of myself in so many ways and she's a favorite character for like really being able to relate to her i mean i don't come from her like gangster background or anything but i do have like a lot of similar interests to her similar passions similar stories and so i feel like having this book and seeing so much myself in it is truly incredible so daisy hates is probably one of my all-time favorite characters i do have loads and loads more but this one sticks with me currently it changes day to day but right now i'm feeling daisy hates and baby hates and just this whole world i adore and then for a world that i could live in i don't think it's very far from reality but i would love to live in the uh briar you off campus world for a day i know it's not very different to what like life is like here but i would or what life is like now i just would really love to escape into this world and be friends with these characters and just see it all happen in person i wish these were like a tv show i feel like that would be such a good tv show but um oh i'm just obsessed with this series this is the first series where i truly loved books and reading and i was so enamored enamored with this series um it's a hockey romance series i'm holding up the play because this is the one that i identify most with i think um with demi being incredibly intelligent and passionate about what she's learning and um the way she cares about other people you know it's something i aspire to be like i wouldn't necessarily say i'm like that but i just i really love this one and this whole world is fascinating and incredible the og series the briar U series there's going to be a, sec a third series i know i can't cope either but i would definitely love to live in this world for a day and then a book that made me cry if you've seen my recent reads video you'll have seen me sob but that would be fractured by al phillips i've already talked about the series but this one is the conclusion and it is so true to those characters and beautiful and stunning and oh, all of the white words all of the words it's devastating it's heartbreaking it puts you through the emotional ringer i read it all in a day and i am still emotionally scarred from it i don't have a physical copy yet because i ordered a signed one from rachel but oh it was just phenomenal absolutely incredible one of those books that lasts with you for a while as well so go read the series please go read that series okay and as for a book that i would love to read for the first time again i'm going with a series and again another one that's very predictable from me but it is the miles high club series by tl swan i finished this yesterday with the ending epilogue things but this series is so comforting and i don't know why because it shouldn't be but it's not really that relatable either it's billionaire ceo romances but these books i don't know how to describe it to you they are just they're chunky but you fly through them they're addictive they're so funny i don't think i've laughed at a book the way i've laughed at these this is book three the casanova i'm holding it up over the stopover just because i really like this one um this one is just oh, it's so funny and humorous it's got the whole england america thing in it it's, oh i'm obsessed i mean these are adventurous romances too it's not the same plot points talked over and over and over again it's not just working through a miscommunication it's like the third act breakup these books have so much charisma to them they have such a charm and such a way of drawing you in and then once you're in you're hooked and you can't get out of them it's just a phenomenal series and oh, i'm obsessed i love them they're perfect i mean there are like the extended epilogues thing was a little samey samey but i couldn't love this series more these characters bring me sheer happiness like there's nothing that i could think about these books that doesn't make me smile like they just make me happy and they're spicy and they are just everything this series is everything and i love it okay this is a 
the last like sort of exception question for me and it is a book I thought I'd hate but I ended up loving and for me I don't really have one. I can't think of any of my books. I went through Goodreads, I went through my physical TBR, I've been through, not physical TBR, all of the books I've read like my physical books and there was one there was nothing that stood out to me that made me think oh yeah I, I thought I was gonna hate that book and I ended up loving it it's just not something I've done and maybe that's me on me and not having like a great broad genre choice I guess but I know what I like and I typically only pick up books that I like I haven't really had any where I've picked them up and been surprised like thinking oh this is gonna be awful and I'm gonna hate it to absolutely loving it so again another question for me that just doesn't doesn't seem to jive and make sense. The next one is a book you loved from a genre that you don't typically read and for me that is going to be The Gun Call by Stephen Rowley. This is a strictly fiction book um, and it is following Patrick O'Hara who has a niece and a nephew Maisie and Grant who are very young I think they're five and like three. So Patrick's brother has got a drug addiction after um, his wife has died of cancer and it's prescription drugs he's addicted to so he's finally off to rehab but Maisie and Grant don't really want, he doesn't want them staying with their sister because his sister is like super regimented and just very strict and not really the environment that he wants his two children growing up in so he says to Patrick hey can my kids come and live with you in Los Angeles for the summer while I'm in rehab and Patrick agrees to this and so Maisie and Grant travel to LA to their Gunkle Patrick's but he's like a recluse in LA or just outside of LA he used to be in the TV film scene and dramatically stepped away from it and has not been seen since um so he now lives in this big old mansion with a pool and everything and these two kids come and stay with him and kind of turn his world upside down um and he's trying to help them remember his their mum and keep her memory alive because he was actually best friends with their mum and that's how uh Patrick's brother ends up meeting their mum and so he's really struggling with her loss the kids are struggling with her loss and it's just like a wholesome story of them pulling themselves back together and becoming a family again and it's so good I loved this book so much I flew through it I tabbed it and I can't wait to reread this one because it's such an emotional heartwarming story so if you're looking for a little something different this summer I would recommend this one it doesn't matter what genre you read there's just so much love and heartwarming hope in this one it's a great palette cleanser and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay and lastly we have a book that got you out of a slump and for me that is The Final Offer by Lauren Asher. You could argue it got me out and put me into a slump but <laughs> no, nonetheless it did get me out of a slump. I read this at the end of January, it's an incredible series following these three brothers who are given this challenge from their grandfather before they can inherit everything that he's left for them and in this one you are following Cal who his one big thing is to go back to the lake house where they used to go when they grew up and reconnect with Lana, his ex. Um, and they parted ways for very different, for a very heartbreaking reason. And it's something, Lana's still living in that house. Is it Lana? Yeah, Lana's still living in the house and you still have, you know, all of the history still there and he's forced to face that history again. While well, Lana has been raising her niece in this small town and it's absolutely incredible. I loved this book. I read pretty much all of it in a day. I think I read like two chapters the day before, but then I sat in bed on a Saturday morning and just read the whole rest of it. And it was incredible. I loved it. It's, it's just, it's an emotional book, but in the most amazing way. It's a very realistic, it's a very realistic and just stunning romance. You know, it's a second chance where, you know, this could be very easily denied and you could, you know, you have to kind of be so vulnerable in this book. And oh, I'm just obsessed. I absolutely loved it. This whole series is incredible, but again, billionaires that are, you know, trying to do the right thing for themselves and for the people that they love. And I am obsessed with this series as well. It's got Disney-esque style to it as well. And Lauren Ashton's writing is just phenomenal. I can't wait for her next series, which is set in the same location that this book was. Um, so big, big fan of this one. And it did get me out of a slump. I wasn't reading and then I read like 600 pages in a day. So, you know, it definitely worked. Um, but yeah, that would be my go-to slump recommendation. Even though it's chunky, I do think it's worth it. If you are in a slump, I would recommend picking up this one if you want something short to read. This is amazing in terms of how it handles tough subject matters, but also an incredible romance that's got emotional depth and a lot of motivation behind it. I feel like this is such a brilliant story. There's travel in this one. I really love it. Ignore the cover. Um, it's 
yes it's a little it is spicy but I wouldn't say it's incredibly spicy um like this book isn't just pure smut there is a lot of stuff behind it and I know people will assume with this cover that it is just pure smut and it's not um there's a lot of talk about how you deal with emotional trauma and how you heal from things and who you rely on and you know this incredible romance in terms of like letting yourself be loved so very very big fan of this one as well perfect for a slump the whole series is great for a slump because they're so short but they're so compelling Whew, that was a whole lot of talking at you but that is the end of the book rex tag i do hope you've enjoyed um obviously i've got a, a whole load of books away now let me grab a stack and show you this is all of the books that i talked about in today's video with all the book recs and ah and that is the end of the book recs tag i know that's a lot of talking at you but i do hope you've enjoyed and found some new books to read uh if you have any questions or comments or books you think i should read please let me know down in the comments below and if you want to see what i'm currently reading or what else i'm up to or other recommendations do go check out my other social media links in the description box below but with that i will let you get back to the rest of your day and i, and I will see you soon on another bookish adventure bye